If you want to learn how to shoot interviews, then this is the video for you to watch. Now, I want you to watch through every single step of the process. I don't know what to do. I give up. This is a disaster. I didn't realize how difficult this would be, and I officially give up. Oh, pardon me. I think you caught me in the middle of my very important looking interview in a house. So, in this video, we're going to learn how to light an interview like this. In fact, we're going to learn how to light this exact interview setup. I'm talking here to the interviewer. They're asking me poignant questions, and every answer I give is emotional and important. Just kidding. Most of what people say in interviews is garbage. But at least the lighting can be nice. Welcome to our new studio. It's not done yet. The walls aren't painted. Uh, this is what happened. We bought a house so we could shoot more videos here and we're renovating the whole thing. No one's living here. This is just for us to film videos in. This is the house we're filming in. It's an ordinary house. We're going to go inside and see what we can get out of this. I want to make this house look as good as possible on camera. Turn the inside lights off. Okay. Turning off four lights. The lights are off. Step one. So I'm in this space and I'm going to start looking around trying to find an angle that I enjoy. Sometimes when I'm trying to find an angle, I, uh, I kind of look funny to people because I get on my hands and knees and uh, I look at things from different angles. Um, the other thing I like to do is I close one eye and I throw the other eye out of focus because I know the background's going to be blurry, so I want to see it blurry in my eye. Um, so what I'm looking at here is there's the windows very bright in the background. So when I stop down, we're going to get that information. The question is, do we have enough light to preserve that back window? I'm liking this because she's uh, put your, face your body that way too. Okay. Uh, you're a little short for that. So we're going to have to sit you up a little bit higher. The chair, the, the table's pretty high. But I'm not liking this black couch behind her. So I might want to move that out of the way. It'll reveal more of that fireplace. Uh, there's some things that need to be moved, but I think this is workable. We might lose some of that window, but it'll give us a good motivation for a key light. Um, I think if we can bring enough light on her that looks natural, we'll be able to bring that background down and darken it up. Um, so my goal is to make the back wall look a little bit more interesting, maybe bring a light from outside or not. We'll see, brighten her up from camera right side, bring in a backlight. I'm going to try to bring that background down and bring her skin tone, bring her exposure up and bring the background exposure down. Right. Oh yeah. I want to touch on that a little bit. This is so important. Find your frame first. Don't just start setting up lights. Find a frame and then you can bring in the lights around it just out of frame sometimes to, to, to shape the light in that room, in that space. I have made mistakes in the past where I've just started setting up lights without finding a great angle. And then we end up uh, having to change everything around at the last second because we're unhappy with something. So. Um, it's important to follow the proper steps. I'm shooting wide open at a T2 and before I had no NDs. So now I'm putting on four stops of ND to see outside and the key light brings her exposure up. It's a big difference. Very exciting. I've had people tell me, why are you spending 25 minutes setting up the lighting for this interview when in the actual video, because of the B-roll, you're only going to see the person for like four seconds of the video. Here's the reason. When the interview shot looks really high quality, high production value, the B-roll shots don't matter as much. You can get away with some footage that's not uh, as good as your interview footage because the interview, foot the, the interview shot is the foundation of the video. Shooting an interview is super important. Being able to shoot a good interview and having your client say, wow, I look really good on camera. A, a lot of times, shooting an interview is about flattering the subject, making them look as good as possible. When you're doing work for clients, 
you gotta remember, you're being paid to make them look good. People like to look good. They wanna be on camera. And when they are on camera, they wanna look like a movie star. And so what we've done over the years is shoot interviews that look cinematic. They look like a movie as much as possible. They don't look like a news interview. It looks like there's some care put into the framing and that we actually care about what we're doing. And because of that, the client says, wow, I look good on camera. And then they wanna make more videos and then they pay us more for those videos. This is important for a business. You gotta make people look good uh, when you're filming them. This is the Aperture 300D Mark II with uh, Aperture's uh, lantern thing. I don't know what it's called, but uh, it gives a soft light. And the reason why I put it on this side of Lynn is because that's the side the windows are on. I want it to seem natural for the viewer that the light would be coming from that side of the house. So I'm establishing uh, rules, light rules, so the viewer doesn't have to think, well, that's weird that the window's over here and the light's coming from over here. It all just looks natural. So now in the background, we've got a big window behind her. And this is so bright that now we're able to see out the window and have it not be blown out. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put a 300D Mark II outside of the house and have it shine onto the wall behind her to kind of bring out the texture in the wall. And we'll also put a backlight right behind Lynn here to, to bring out uh, the side of her hair and her shoulder and have her pop from the background a little bit more. Makes it look like the sun's coming through the window. When it's possible, we like to do stuff like this. Makes the world look like a happier, prettier place where it's always perpetual sunrise or sunset, like it should be. So I've set up this LED bar. This is from a company called Quasar Science. And I really like this light because it has, on full power, it has a four hour battery life. So in a pinch, when we're going fast, we don't have to set up uh, a cable for this. And uh, it, it can, it's color changeable. And uh, it's a nice soft light. There we go. What we always want is for the image to look natural, like we didn't actually light it, like it just looks good for some reason, like we got lucky. I, this is our fill light, but it's not a light, it's just bouncing back, obviously. Um, without it, um, I felt like the shadows were a little dark. This boosts the, uh, the shadows on that side of her. I think that looks nice. Okay, this is our 300, Aperture 300D. It's falling apart because we've been using it every day for years. Uh, it's helping the background. It's helping add a little bit of texture to the fireplace here. And I'm just hitting it off the ceiling. I got lucky. Hitting it off the ceiling really improves that area of the image. It was just too dark. It was, it was too eye dark away. and it was just, it didn't have the texture we needed. So now we've got the texture. There it is, there's our second angle. So, I put the camera on this side for a very specific reason. If I were to put the B camera, the second camera, on this side of the interviewer, it would cross the line. On one of the shots, should be looking camera right, on the other shot, should be looking camera left. I know this because I've made that mistake. It's just like a movie. You gotta keep the 180 degree rule with an interview. This is a very typical kind of setup for us. Two cameras, a key light, a bounce, a little bit of texture in the background, and a backlight. This kind of framing for an interview isn't going to raise any eyebrows for any clients. No one's gonna say, wow, this is such a creative image. This looks like a standard interview. To achieve the depth of field that you see here, I purposefully moved her quite a ways away from the background. She's a good 20 feet away from that back wall. You don't want to film somebody against a flat wall. There won't be any depth. No matter how big your sensor is, no matter how low your f-stop is, you want to pull somebody away from that background. Let's talk about why I feel like this image works for me. The reason why I know it's a good image is because my eye immediately goes to her eyes. The reason why this is happening is because her face is the brightest part of the image. It also has the most contrast and there are leading lines that are pointing me to her face. 
when the lights are on and people are about to talk, they start sweating for some reason, I don't know why, and they start getting nervous and they, uh, their face gets shiny and that looks like garbage on camera. What's, what's the point of having all this nice lighting and cameras uh, when, when someone's face is shiny? So we use powder and a brush thing. Uh, there's, there's other things we use too. There's different tricks to bring down the shine on somebody's face. So if you're not doing this, stop and start doing it. Okay, enough of my powder rant. Um, put the powder down. I'm gonna put the powder down. If you feel like subscribing to this channel, please restrain yourself. Do not click the subscribe button. We just reached over a thousand subscribers. We're very happy where we are. We don't want to grow anymore. If you didn't like anything at all about this video, please leave a negative comment. People see those and then they realize that the video does suck.